It's morphin' time! Dragon Sword! Mini Book X. Today we'll be reviewing this hand, not a handheld, the convertible mini laptop by Chewy. I said, by Chewy. <coughs> now I know you're probably here only for handhelds, but maybe check out this little lappy, which I picked up off AliExpress for $265. Cause as usual, I'll tell you all the good, bad, and everything in between. So check the timestamps and find out what works for you. Now real quick, let's go over some simple specs. The convertible laptop has an Intel Celeron N100. That's basically entry level CPU with some Iris XE graphics. So now you're probably thinking, get out of here with this pleb CPU. And sure, it's not capable of AAA gaming, but I'll go over more in the performance section. Lastly, some other key features are two USB-C 3.2 or whatever they call it, ports, and a 28.8 watt hour battery. And probably the standout feature, the 10.51 inch 1920 by 1200p IPS display, which is also a touchscreen. Okay, let's go over what I like and why you should care about this small boy. The 265 I paid goes beyond the face value specs, as it's also got surprisingly good build quality with the all metal chassis and basically 10 keyless keyboard, which has passable travel and key width. No, you won't win any keyb enthusiast hearts, but it's very functional. The USB-C ports I mentioned earlier do display out and you can even plug in those fancy Vitcher XR glasses I reviewed the other day, or some other AR type glasses. Or, of course, you can always plug in any kind of external monitor. And this works through both of the ports, which is nice. Then of course, there is the standout gimmick or trick, which is the convertibility. You can use this as a laptop, in tent mode, or as a tablet. So if you're looking for larger convertible laptops, the obvious trade-off is that you don't get as much portability as something like this, which weighs just under two and a half pounds or one kilogram. And though I do love my Asus Flow X16, I think that thing gets heavy real quick. So something like this with the touchscreen for quick note taking and even some light artwork definitely works well. Like the keyboard thing though, you're not going to win any awards like any art shows, since there seems to be only limited palm rejection and only active styluses work, at least for me. But it'll get the job done if you've just got kids that want to color on the screen with apps like this one. And you can always just set up in tent mode, like I mentioned, to connect your own PCMR keep. Another thing I like is the surprisingly capable power for light gaming. So this is where I'll talk about the performance. I booted up Disney Dreamlight for the kid and it works pretty well at 720p mid and low settings. What do you mean you came here for real gaming performance? Fine, how's this? Cyberpunk, almost at a playable state. Yeah, okay, I had to do a lot of work to get that at even sub 30 FPS with things like Luke FC's frame generation mod. And even that can't make it playable. But if you are reasonable with the demands, like with some lighter emulation, you can load up EmuDeck and get things rolling with even GameCube, Dreamcast, PSP, and PS2 titles from my light testing. Keep in mind that not all titles will run at full speed, and there is part of a problem with that hardware wise, which I'll talk about in my dislike section. Again, I wouldn't try anything extremely demanding emulation wise like PS3 or even Wii, but this works great for the kids. And for another hundred bucks over something like a PS portal, wait, a hundred bucks? What am I talking about? Let me tell you in the con section. And here are the cons. Now I got a deal on this for Black Friday and the current retail price is closer to about 300 or 315. Liar. I did get it for 265 as I mentioned, which I think is a pretty good value, but once you get closer to that $300 mark, it's pushing that acceptable boundary for pricing. Now for the actual cons, something I don't like about this device is the lack of inputs, since there are only two USB-C ports. Thankfully, there are things like this Ugreen 10-in-1 RevoDock. RevoDock? How do you even say this? Which they did send to me, but I'm not technically reviewing it here. So I'll just tell you that having something like this can be a game changer for the likes of a device like the Mini Book X, because you'd be able to get essentially full functionality like a micro SD, SD card slot, HDMI ports, power pass through, and even ethernet, which might really be needed for someone on the go. I've also tested this with those Vitcher XR glasses as mentioned. And by doing that, you would basically have a big screen in front of you, a touch screen below you, and then all the ports you'd probably ever need to transfer whatever unmentionable files or attach whatever dongle you'd like. Yeah, yeah, maybe then you're living in dongle hell, but hey, Apple users are used to that, right? And yeah, it would be nice if Ugreen included a cable or a charger like their own Nexo Pro, 
But remember that this entire package is pretty small. And if portability is what you're looking for in a productivity facing device, this type of setup will likely do the job and all for under three pounds. One last thing about this Ugreen hub though, be sure to plug it into this USB-C port to charge and not the other one around back. Otherwise, someone in the comments will probably laugh at you or make fun of you, maybe me. And as for the other cons of this MiniBook X, I think the biggest one is the display, which is actually 50 Hertz. Now, remember how I was saying that you couldn't be able to play all titles? Dreamcast, for instance, like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, isn't going to run at full speed because you'll need to plug in an external display, which runs at 60 Hertz or higher which kind of sucks, but I guess it's one of those things that you get what you pay for. And speaking of that, the last gripe I have is battery related. You may have seen in the specs that it has a paltry 28.8 watt hour battery. And while this chip in here basically draws around six to 10 watts, that also translates to generally around two to three, maybe four hours of play or use if you stretch it, which isn't fantastic. But I guess they had to keep the weight and cost down somehow. Now, if only Ugreen would send me one of those power banks, am I right? Now let's get to the verdict. Who should buy this thing or who is it for? For me and my use case, it's gonna be my kid's first laptop. Given its price tag and how much it costs to get a real convertible Windows laptop, I think it fits the bill for me. Why not just get an iPad or tablet then, bruh? You might say. Well, I want the full fat Windows suite for when I do boot up some low spec games, like some kids games, as I mentioned before, or games like Minecraft. And as for the tablet thing, I don't want to bother having to find or attach an external key or one of those terrible type cover keyboards. So if this sounds like a niche that you might be interested in, I say check out the links in the description. No, they're not sponsored and neither was this video. And lastly, if you're wondering how this might stack up to those mini PCs, ones you see floating around on every channel known to man, I have no idea because no one has sent me one of those for review. Just kidding, I do know, but you'll have to leave me an angry comment and check out this review first. 